occasionally a fishing buddy and I will use a bobber or strike indicator or a nymph. Simple. You're both going to hell. <laughs> that was one. Oh. Doing some trout spay. Okay, guys, keep in mind that this is just my two cents. This is just what I think. It's my opinion. It could be wrong. It may only work where I fish, but this maybe they'll you'll just get a little new wrinkle that you'll want to try. It'll give you more confidence that if you're getting skunked, you are probably you might not be doing it wrong. It just may be they're not wanting to bite. You know, they're not in there. They're full from previous feeding. You know, who knows? But just, you gotta get out there, you gotta keep fishing, you gotta get the local intel from the fly shop. But anyway, this is just my opinion. It might be totally wrong, but it might help some of you. The number one rule for trout spay success is you absolutely have to spend the time on the water. It means a minimum of a few hours or a half day or a full day. Yesterday, we spent 11 hours on the river because we got a late start and I hooked and landed three fish. That's why it's so important to have a fishing partner that is rabid about his enthusiasm for swinging flies. Hey everybody, instead of going through some big song and dance about all the intricacies of trout spay, I thought I'd just give it to you uh, down and dirty, what really matters and what really doesn't. What really matters is spending the time on the water hours and hours and hours. You can't just try it for 45 minutes and be done. It takes hours, days, it takes getting skunked. The best hours to do it though are early in the morning or late in the afternoon and evening. As far as flies goes, don't, don't overthink the fly thing. For flies, tried and true, Sculptzilla. So when it's overcast or dark, evening time, Black works good. When it's daytime, olive or natural or grizzly or whatever works good. If you don't like Sculptzilla, try Wooly Bugger. Weighted Wooly Bugger or otherwise Wooly Bugger, just non-weighted Wooly Bugger. All I care about is just getting it under the surface of the water. I do feel better when it's, when it gets down deep but I don't even know if it's that necessary. I have this feeling, you know, I think I'm gonna cast out men and get it deep and hopefully dredge up a big monster out in the heavy current, but that might just be a pipe dream. Anyway, so sink tips, just use any, any sink tip will do, basically any fly will do. I'm after the fish that are just so they have such a death wish. They're just so ready to bite a fly that they'll swim a long ways to do it or just hit it hard. So I'm not interested in step, swing, try to map some kind of feeding thing they got going on. I'm more interested in just catching some um, crazed lunatic out there who wants to just demolish the fly. And so as far as like setting the hook goes and stuff, usually if I catch them, it's because they just engulf the fly. I don't concern myself too much like with trailer flies, although, uh, so I, you don't have to think that, oh, it's spay, you know, we gotta have a trailer fly. Although I do use trailer flies mostly. Sometimes they'll foul. You always gotta check your trailer fly to make sure it's not fouling. The other thing is, is if you're fishing a woolly booger, you know, or you're fishing a slump buster, something where the tail hangs out farther than the hook, that's not a huge concern because the, the trout that I'm interested in are just gonna demolish that fly. You know, it's almost like you don't really even need to set the hook because they just set it themselves. You know, you got a tight line and they just grab it. So I'm not too finicky on that. The, uh, the uh, Sculptzilla has been good. I've caught a lot right on the chin or right on the snout but that's not as much as a concern for me anymore because I've, it just seems like if the trout wants it, you fi find a trout that's crazy enough, he's just gonna engulf that thing. 
And I I had a day yesterday where I was on the water and they hit every single thing I threw at them. I, I have caught fish on the stupidest flies. I, I'll tie up the dopiest fly imaginable just to see if it'll work and it'll work. My confident flies are probably the Sculptzilla. My purple headed thunder wagon, they were hitting everything yesterday. Olive, black, natural. You know, everything I threw out there, I threw a little thin mint. They hit that. I could not keep one hooked yesterday. And I think it was just, there was something nasty in the air that just made them wanna just do an electric shock, wham, and then not just engulf the fly. So instead of trade, changing my whole strategy, you know, figured out what I was doing wrong. I just fished it the way I'd been successful before, which is basically casting down and acro across and then standing there, letting the current swing it through. As soon as it's done dangling, maybe give it a pump or maybe just walk three or four steps and cast again. First thing you have to do is spend the time. Second thing you have to do is cover the water. Third thing you have to do is don't overthink your flies. Uh, you don't have to mend if you don't want to. I don't really think it matters to me because it's usually right around the time everything straightens out on its own. That's usually where I get bit. Sometimes I'll cast a little wider, maybe throw them in and, and they'll hit right away. But by and large, if I really want to cover the country, I'll just cast, you know, really downstream and across a little and walk and really move the fly. So I'm not too concerned with setting the hook. If they are on there, you know, I might whew, lean my rod over and set the hook, but usually they set it themselves. Probably I've missed a few because maybe I didn't act fast enough. I don't, you know, that's, you're just not gonna catch them all. Um, okay, fish in the evening or morning if you can. When the light's off the water, that helps, or cloudy days are good. Or if it's sunny and a cloud comes by, quick, go fish. You, you know, if you're taking a break or something. Um, but the kind of fish I'm looking for, it's like you really can't do anything wrong. You cast it out there, you know, you're gawking around. I've caught them when I've cast and well, I'm done with this run and just decide instead of reel in, I'll just walk back to the bank, wham! Or I'm sitting there messing with my reel you know, my fly's in a seam, I'm monkeying around and wham! You know, I don't have to be in a zone, I don't have to be, uh, <laughs> I'm just out there doing the stupidest stuff and I'm counting on the fish. I mean, I'm, I'm into it, but I, my casts aren't perfect, I'm just getting them out there, swinging them through. You don't have to be a great caster, that's another thing. There's, there's hundreds, there probably is hundreds of casting videos on my YouTube channel, but there is a ton of Skagit casting videos that will help you. The main thing though, if, if you can just roll cast it out there and swing it through there, cover the water, make sure your fly is not foul, you know, just don't worry about your leader. I use a level, I use like 14 pound fluoro right now. The other thing I'll tell you though, is some of this, these, I don't care what line you use, it's gonna have brittle lengths. So you, when you tie your t fly on, you gotta jerk, double check, pull really hard, and make sure it's not gonna break because you might have a brittle section of line. I don't care if it's Maxima Ultra Green or any line, strand, any line that I've used has had brittle section. So if anybody's got some good ideas for me, let me know. But I just check each section and they're good. And I, if I get a wind knot and my line's heavy enough, I don't really worry if I'm using, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to use 20 pound test just because they don't care. Anywhere from two feet to three feet, whatever works for you. You can use a length and half of Rod length and a half of mono doesn't matter. I just like the sink tip because it's easy to hook back onto my rod. I can walk back to the boat. Um, the other thing is when you're covering water, don't stand in one place and just fish. Sometimes it works, but usually it doesn't. We're after the fish that once the fly swings through, 
they grab it. You usually, if you miss them, sometimes they'll hit it again in a little bit, but usually you just keep going. Don't stand in one place and fish. Move, continually move. Cover the water, cover the miles. If you only have one, one run, then, and it's long enough, cover it a few times with different flies. But keep the fly in the water, keep swinging. Try to fish till dark. Don't give up. If you get skunk, go back and do it again. If you just stay consistent, if you know, you gotta know how to read water, pick a, pick a good run that everybody fishes. You'll be surprised that you can pick their pockets sometimes. You know, the nymphing guys, they don't catch everything. You may swing a black sculpcilla through there and um, catch one when they're gone. Pick a run, maybe a point of land that goes out. It's got a little riffle, there's a seam, fast water, slow water. Swing from the fast water through the seam. You wanna know where the bottom is. If it's too deep, there won't be in there. If it's, you know, three or four feet, that's perfect. If it's five or six feet, that might be okay too. The main thing is keep swinging and, and you'll be successful. Trey likes to cast at a pretty wide angle, mend upstream, pump the line, and then men downstream at the end and pump the line some more. To cover water, I'll cast at a more downstream angle. Occasionally though, I'll get a bite at a wider angle, so I'll cast maybe at 45 degrees. I don't mend usually, I just stand there. And sometimes in slower water, I'll cast straight across, maybe men downstream, but I try to get it to land straight and then let the current do the work. Trey is more methodical and maybe only he'll take a couple steps or three while I'll take four or five or seven, whatever. I really cover the water and it's not uncommon for him to come behind me and pick up something I missed. Nevertheless, I catch my share of fish and the important thing is not your method or your fly or your technique. The important thing is keeping the fly in the water then getting it right back into the water to swing again. Assuming you are on decent water and only swing using your spay gear, sooner or later you will start catching fish if you keep swinging and don't give up until you do catch a fish. The second greatest tip I'll give you is you have to cover the water. Cast, swing, step, a couple steps, three steps. Keep casting and swinging. If you have a good long run, Maybe swing with a olive woolly bugger. And then when you go through the second time, you can swing with a natural colored woolly bugger. And that is supposing that the run has had a little time to rest. similar fish and I'm really happy. It's so pretty and so and I caught him on a little bead head rabbit fly I made myself. Love this line. I have to have more faith in my own flies.